Over a thousand years ago, Mongolian horsemen were invading China. So bent on conquest, they couldn't bother to even carry utensils or food. Eventually, the Mongolians found themselves facing the Great Wall of China with no idea how to cross it. So, they settled in for a siege. But soon after, they became hungry. They eventually decided to boil some water in a helmet. They threw bits of food in until they were cooked, and faster than you can say Genghis Khan, the hot pot was born. Now, a thousand years later, we add a British Columbia spin with our West Coast seafood hot pot. Mussels, clams, and fresh fish in a tomato broth with Dungeness crab dumplings. Let the taste bud invasion begin. I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. We've got our Mongolian tribute today, West Coast style. It's a West Coast seafood hot pot, mussels, clams, fresh fish in a tomato broth with a Dungeness crab dumpling. Let's get started. So uh, what we've done already is we've got a fish stock uh, going here. So you can see in here I've got some crab shells, whatever you sort of had in the freezer, some shrimp shells, there was some uh, lovely halibut bones in there, all nice, all nice and fresh. This literally takes about 45 minutes to do because the bones are so delicate. Add some mirepoix, you got a little um, celery onions in there and all those bones, top it off with water and away you go. 45 minutes later, your broth is ready. A couple other things we need to do to get our hot pot going. Get a pan hot with some, uh, a little bit of oil in it, not too much. We don't want sort of a film on the top of the, of the hot pot. We just really want just enough in there to sort of get the vegetables moving. And then we're gonna add more flavor again. Mirepoix is the base of most dishes and is, is just there for adding these sort of, these fragrant uh, flavors to our dish. So we got some lovely orange carrots, bright green celery, and then just some white onion. All diced up nice and sort of fine. Uh, there may be quarter inch dice or something like that. It's important to have sort of very similar sizes here because it's all gonna cook at the same time. There we are. Now you're probably wondering what the heck, that's an early first stage of this dish, but these vegetables will actually cook a lot quicker than most of our, uh, or cook a lot slower than most of our fish. So the fish is gonna cook really quickly in our broth here once we get that going. Well, that'll, I'll get that to you later in the show here. Okay, let that sweat just for a few seconds. Put some garlic in there. And then we're gonna turn our attention to these crab dumplings. Okay, and we can get the garlic into the pot. Now, in my big glass bowl here, I have a couple of egg whites. Probably hard to see in there, but two egg whites are in there right now. And a trusty whisk. We're gonna get this bad boy going. This is where you uh, really show your, your forearm strength here. Now the hot pot is well known all over the world. Different varieties come from different parts of the world. We're working in kind of a West Coast flair on the Mongolian style. But uh, yeah, Europe Europeans have, each sort of country seems to have their own one. France might have uh, chicken and beef in theirs. Belgium might have rabbit and, and pig's feet. Um, yeah, all kinds of different ones. Yeah, a really versatile dish that sort of incorporates all different types of, uh, all different types of meat and fish. Let's uh, have a look at our pod here. While we're doing two things at once, working in the kitchen is all about multitasking. You can see that my egg whites are starting to fluff up. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt here. It's gonna help with a little bit of stabilization, help them fluff a little further. And we're just gonna give our vegetables a little toss here. There we go. Now if your pan starts getting too hot and you're starting to get color, you don't want that. You wanna stop it right away. We're not at that stage yet, but if you did, just take a little bit of your broth, put it in there, that'll start to keep softening things going there, okay? Getting nice and fluffy now. We just want that shine to just change color, just, or change texture just a very little bit here. Now we're really trying to incorporate air here. This is gonna make our dumpling a little bit li lighter and fluffier. All right, that looks great. Our crab meat, so we've got Dungeness crab meat here, which is beautiful meat. It's. Uh, you know, really sweet, full of this uh, this fifth flavor they call umami. Really fabulous, it's my favorite. It's a little bit of work to get at, but it's definitely worth it. Okay, in it goes. Oh heck, let's put it all in there. I love Dungeness crab, it's fantastic. There we go. We need some flour. Now flour we're gonna do by eye here. This is all about touchy-feely kind of stuff, right? Mix it around, let me grab a spoon here. We're just gonna start folding it in. We wanna be very careful not to sort of deflate those egg whites. Folding it in, folding it in, very nice. 
Perfect, let's check on our vegetables. Okay. Looking good, I'm gonna add just a touch of that stock, like I said, very little bit. We want those vegetables to sweat down, and again, there we go. Want them to sweat down, but not to color. Okay, keep folding. It's still pretty wet in there, but before I finish up, or keep going with uh, some flour, I'm gonna put some green onions. And then I've got some of those preserved lemons. For those of you that follow the show, we made them a little while ago, and I wasn't lying when I said I like to put them in all kinds of stuff. So it's a great condiment to have in your fridge. There we go. So hopefully you've had a chance to, uh, to make them already, and they'll be set and ready to go for you. Eh, just a couple of green onions in there. You can put a little more, a little less if you'd like. Another pinch of salt. There we are. And then here's our preserved lemon. Okay, probably about half of that is good. Cut away the guts. There you go. And now we want to dice this up fairly fine because you don't want a big bite of it, but you want it enough in there to give you some flavor. Okay. There we go. Fold it in. Okay, still pretty wet. So a little bit more flour. And then we're gonna check on our, check on our vegetables there. Here we go. Our mirepoix is cooking away nicely. Oh, see, I'm starting to get some color there. Gotta pay attention, chef. What are you doing? Here we go. I'm gonna get a little stock in there. And we're almost ready to start adding a whole whack of the stock, so. Oh. Smells incredible in here. I mean, I love fish, love the west coast. I've lived on both coasts, east and west. And uh, I'll tell you, I just love fish. So this is, this is really a delight to my, uh, to, my, to my senses here today. Okay, tomato sauce is gonna go into our pot. There it goes. Perfect. And now I'm gonna use a strainer here because I don't want all the shells and peppercorns and so on to, uh, to pop into my, uh, into my hot pot broth. So I'm just gonna hold that over. And then I don't have to worry too much about uh, whether I'm getting, getting any as I scoop here. There's those shrimp shells. A little bit of that mirepoix coming with me. Oh heck, let's do this. There we go. That's a little easier. Give that a little time to all incorporate there. All right, we're gonna let our hot pot broth come together. We'll be back later in the show to pull together our West Coast seafood hot pot with mussels, clams, fresh fish in a tomato broth with Dungeness crab dumplings. But first, following the break, we're getting out of the kitchen. You'll want to stick around for that. When you think of food trucks, you think street food. Not today, it's field food. We're literally outstanding in the field. Any closer to the field, we'd have to check our shoes before going inside. Brandon over here at the Harvest Road Food Truck has gonna whip up some delicious food for us. Hey Brandon, how are you, mate? I'm doing really well, how are you? I'm, I'm fabulous, I mean, how do you beat this? We're out here literally in the middle of a field and we got some amazing food about to come up here. That's the sentiment we get often. Yeah. Nice, yeah, yeah. So what's the, uh, what's the, what's the story with Harvest Road? Well, Harvest Road is really, um, Kind of our vision has come together to, to do a farm to table, full service restaurant. We have uh, the freshest and highest quality ingredients available to us and we're making great food with it. Cool. Um, we, uh, we source all of our produce from Mitchell's Farm Market, the majority of which is grown right here on the farm. Awesome. All of our, uh, all of the, the meat we serve has been raised by local farmers that we know personally and we're really proud of all, what we're doing and who we're working with. Yeah, that's fantastic. Like a truly farm to fork kind of scenario here, hey? Exactly, yeah. So what were you thinking about whipping up today? I think we should take you through the breakfast sandwich. It's a pretty fantastic item. Oh, you can't beat a good breakfast sandwich. Mind if I hop on? You show me how it goes? Yeah, come on in. Cool, all right. All right, Brandon, so we're here, we're on, ready to roll, breakfast sandwich time. What's all the right. first step? First step, let's grab the house-made pork sausage patties from the fridge there. Yeah, and get. Jenny told us it was top left, right? So yeah. we, we know exactly where it is. She's got the kitchen on lock. <laughs> so the, our, uh, our pork comes from um, our neighbor's farm, Ferryman Butcheries, yeah. and uh, all of our pork products come from them. It's a spectacular product. It's ethically raised, free of hormones, pasture fed. Nice. Can't get better stuff. All those things that we're all looking for these days exactly. in a great pork patty, yeah, for sure. Exactly. And, and there's uh, more than just pork in there, obviously. What that's a... right. And so it's seasoned with some nutmeg, some salt and pepper, onion powder, and some rub sage. Oh, delicious. Yeah. That sounds amazing. So we'll also put a local free run egg 
down on here. All right, what else goes on this sandwich here? All right, so the sandwich is topped with our house-made ha smoked habanero mayonnaise. Okay. So I take habaneros, greenhouse grown at Sunwing. Yeah. I smoke them and pickle them in blackberry vinegar for a month. Yeah. And, uh, you know, mix them up with, with some carrots, some honey. They're, there's no sugar added. There's no preservatives in there. Cool. And so we mix that up. That's what's going to top the sandwich, give it some kick. Yeah. Um, we're pretty much, we're getting close here. Oh, that doesn't take long at all, eh? This guy's a flip. There we go. And, you know, being this close to these incredible ingredients, we have some pretty good produce to play with. Yeah, so we've been... I mean, just looking at these beets here, right? I mean, look at those beet greens. They look super healthy. Looks really delicious. We've been um, topping this sandwich lately with that. Uh, we do some rotating, right? So we have, when things are fresh, we're making sure that's what we're putting on our sandwich. Yeah. Making sure that's what's going into our food. So right now there's some really nice beets All right. available to us. And well, look at this fancy gizmo. We just spiralize some of that. So nice fresh raw beets on there. So lots of nutrients, yeah. lots of uh, lots of healthful properties in there. Good crunch, and it's it's got a nice you know a little earthy taste, but it's not it's not overwhelming. The spiralizing you know is a nice presentation, and it's super tasty too. Mm -hmm. So we'll run this oh. through the. Through the bun toaster. Still tastes like the earth. <laughs> oh, it's delicious. I love the sweetness of beets and a little bit of crunch. Really nice. So we pair the sandwich with, as I mentioned, our house made potato chips. So those are cut fresh and you know I'm in here cooking those every day. Yeah, yeah. So not sick of them yet? How many of you eat? It doesn't look like you eat that many though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe I'm getting I'm getting filled up by the, all the good smells I'm around all yeah, day. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we get a nice healthy portion of that with the sandwich. Perfect. And people really love these. We may even, you know, people are pressuring us. They're saying, you should sell these in the market. You know, yeah. you, should, you should make a side business. They're, we Back have, them up and sell them. This hot sauce is pretty in, is in pretty high demand as well. Yeah, I um, bet. We have another neat product that buns up over there. Oh, I cool. I'll grab it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So we have some field fresh green leaf lettuce. We yeah. Put on the bottom here. Our nice beet strings. Lovely. And. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Cheese is beautifully I melted. Made sausage patty. Oh, man. That looks Topped delicious. Top of a free run egg. Some sharp cheddar. And now we got that habanero aioli. That's not going to blow my socks off, is it? You know what? It's pretty, it's nice and mild as well yeah. as, as having a good kick. Right. So yeah. it's, it, it's a balanced sauce. I think that people are really, really responding super well to it. Nice. And, uh, well, I think that's the that's the key too, right? Like the habaneros can be overpowering, but if you balance it with all those other ingredients you were talking about, like then you can come up with a really nice flavorful sauce that has a bit of kick, but that's fine. That pickling that we do as well kind of takes takes a bit of uh, cool. that, that heat out of it, but keeps that flavor in there. Nice. Do you mind if I uh, grab a big bite of this guy? Or what? Of course. That looks fantastic. You know, the beets, beautiful colors, it smells amazing. The bun feels really super fresh too. That's great. It's a really lovely uh, product that we have. We're, we serve Portofino um, baking, so that's all made just a kilometer and a half away from us. And they use some grains that are grown here on the farm in their products. So, you know, that one mile diet people talk about, we have our porks coming from a kilometer and a half away. All the vegetables are coming from our field. That that's egg's fantastic. a local egg. And you, uh, can, you can just taste even, how fresh it is. Like yeah. that is a that is a phenomenal breakfast sandwich. So good. I'm gonna have another bite. Please Brennan, do. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank Jenny for me too, please. And uh, I can't wait to uh, finish this off and come back for some more. Right on. Cool. Thanks, thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. It's back to our kitchen where we're working on our West Coast Seafood Hot Pot. It's got mussels, clams, fresh fish, all in a tomato broth with Dungeness Crab dumplings. Now before we left, we had the pot going and our dumplings all set to get in there. So while you're away, I was cooking a few, but I'll show you just how to do it here. This is called quenelling. You don't necessarily have to do this, but this does help make an even shape. And into a simmering pot. Really important that we don't do a, uh, a boiling pot here, because if you put it into boiling water, what's gonna happen? Your dumpling's just gonna break all apart, okay? 
Now, in case I uh, didn't explain it earlier, the, the, the red here is a tomato juice. So you can just use a simple tomato juice. Um, you know, some people use a Clamato juice, which is always kind of cool. It adds a little extra flavor, but it's uh, totally up to you. You can put whatever you'd like in there, okay? Okay, so our dumplings are in there. Again, we're just gonna let that simmer. We don't want it to boil, definitely don't want it to boil. Okay, now let's have a look at our fish here. We've got some lovely halibut. Look at that amazing white flesh there. And we've got this really cool Arctic char. Arctic char is one of my favorite fish. Look at that skin. Doesn't it look cool? Like little pink specks in there and stuff like that. The skin's delicious, but I don't like it when it's boiled. I like it when it's fried and crispy. So I like to take it off. Let's go ahead and do that now. Look at the texture of that fish. Doesn't it look great? Beautiful, almost orange color. We're just gonna get our knife underneath there, just like that, perfect. And another one. There we go. Now, there is a sequence to this. There's an order into which we have to do it. What's gonna cook the fastest, what's gonna take a little bit less time, so on and so forth. Our fish will probably go in first here, and then we'll quickly put in our clams and our mussels right away afterwards. And these small prawns are gonna go in just as we go to the plate, because even the residual cooking in our pot will uh, we'll finish those off. So let's cut these into sort of bite size, or a little bit better in bite size pieces. And then we can go straight into our pot. Halibut first. Okay, here we go. Very nice, just sprinkle it around. Then in with our char. Arctic char, one of my favorite fish. If you can find it at your local fishmonger, definitely pick it up and give it a try. Now this part of the process is gonna go really quickly. On, honest, it really won't take long. So that fish will just start to cook. Let's get our clams in there. We've got manila clams, West Coast manila clams. They're absolutely fantastic, but when you buy them, ask your fishmonger, say, I need them purged, they have to be purged. If you don't get them purged, they're gonna get, they're, you'll have kind of sandiness to them, gritty, uh, and so you'll have to either do it yourself or suffer the consequences of sand in your teeth while you're eating your hot pot, and that's never pleasant. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit here now because we're adding cold ingredients to this hot pot, and that's gonna lower the temperature. In with our mussels. Our dumplings are cooking nicely. Look at this guy right here. You can sort of tell when they start to firm up. Yep, they're nice. So we're gonna give it a little taste. Oh man, mm. it's exquisite. It has just this delicate fish flavor. I can't wait to try some of those pieces of flesh, some of those pieces of fish in there. It's gonna be fantastic. Give it another taste, just because it was so good the first time. Mm. Yeah, I love it. Okay, now, a couple things with our shellfish. We want to make sure that our clams and our mussels open up all the way. If any of them don't open, you can see this one here. Hopefully, uh, Lindsay, are you grabbing that? See how that one's starting to pop open there? That's exactly what we're looking for. Here's another one. This one's wide open already. Perfect. If any of them don't open at all, discard them. Throw them away. You don't want to eat any of those ones that don't open. Let's get our uh, serving vessel. Look at this bad boy. Hey, it's no Mongolian helmet, but it, uh, it's close, right? Like, look at that thing. Doesn't it look great? This is going to be our serving vessel, I'm gonna put the dumplings in first because they're already done. Now, if, you're, if some things are taking a little bit longer to cook than others, do it this way. Take it out piece by piece, right? I got a feeling my Arctic char is already done. Halibut's gonna be really close here. This is there's no magic of television here. This is really cooking, okay? Perfect. Looks like all our mussels are wide open. Okay, now, this last bit, I'm just gonna put the spot prawns in. Aren't these beauties? Look at them. Yeah, way better than any tiger prawn any day. And at this stage, we can really just start pouring things in because those, uh, those prawns are gonna be all done. Halibut's nice, see, nice and flaky. Still a little bit opaque in there, which is fantastic. Don't want dry, dry fish in our hot pot. Okay, I'm gonna go to the pot here with this. There, where should I do this here? How about right there? In with that broth, some more of the halibut. These prawns are all nicely cooked now. Awesome clams. Okay, remember if you see any mussels or clams that don't open up, make sure you discard them, okay? All of ours are nicely open though. This looks fantastic, holy smokes. Gorgeous smell, it smells like nice fresh ocean. Just love it, here we go. Doesn't smell like low tide. If that's, if that's the smell you got, you better, uh, you, better, you better start over, mate, okay? And there we have it. Finish it with a little bit of fresh parsley, and there you have it, our West Coast Seafood Hot Pot, mussels, clams, fresh fish, and a tomato broth. 
And don't forget those Dungeness crab dumplings. Looks amazing. Genghis Khan would never have eaten a meal like this without a tasty beverage. With me today, Bill from Liquor Planet. How you doing, Bill? Good, good. Yeah, yourself? nice to see you, buddy. What have you brought? What have you what, got here? Well, uh, I brought this from the world famous Liquor Planet, okay. the largest uh, privately owned liquor store in the province. Very cool. Uh, and it's a true cornucopia of wine. We have approximately between four and 6,000 different wines to choose from. Wow. A lot of local wines. And 15,000 square feet of uh, and 15, space to store it. square hey? feet of fun because it's, Holy it, smokes. it's just fun working there. Uh, I brought a Kim Crawford Sauvignon Blanc to go along with the hot pot. Yes, now, this is a pretty popular wine. A lot of people know Kim Crawford, right? Hugely popular. But you've got an interesting fact about it. Well, Kim Crawford, uh, a lot of people figure that Kim Crawford is a young lady, but it's not. Uh, uh, Kim is a, a fellow. Oh, no way. Yeah. Hmm. So I wonder a little, if that's a common thing down in New Zealand that, uh, that men have the name Kim. Well, you wouldn't see that up here too often. No, you wouldn't. No, Johnny you wouldn't. Cash might run to write a song about it or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't we have a taste and then see Absolutely. how it works with this seafood hot pot? Well, here. let's hope it does. Yeah, it has a lot of uh, passion fruit flavors, a lot of citrus going on. Nice, nice. It should be a, a fantastic uh, complement to your uh, Cool, that should cut through nicely in there. Yeah, your mussels and the, the fish. Excellent. All right. There we go. Let's this is for you. Thank you, sir. You got the big glass. Oh, I got the big glass this time. Nice, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I love the nose on this. I've had this wine before, mm. I can't lie. It's pretty tasty. Mm. Mm. Nice melon nose. And oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So hopefully. Go ahead. Grab your spoon there. We'll see how I did. See, you gave me the big glass of wine. I gave you the bigger <laughs> plate of food there, the bowl of food. Let's give it a taste it here. Looks, it looks fantastic in the, in the bowl. Oh, man. A Dungeness crab dumpling in there. Mm-hmm. Mm so good. Mm. If I can get the crab dumpling to break apart here. Oh, wow. delicious. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yum, yum. All right. Lots okay. of that sweet seafood in there. Delicious. And I think it does uh, complement it. So. I think you know what you're doing. Hmm. So if I come into Liquor Planet, you, can you do that? Can you like say, here's a Kim Crawford something on Blanc, goes great with Absolutely. X, Y, and Z? That's why I get paid the big buck. Nice, well, we'll mm -hmm. tell people to come in and look for you then, hey? Sorry, I'm good on mobile. <laughs> that's that was, that's, that a, was that's a good sign, Bill, that's yeah. a good sign. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. That's delicious. <laughs> Check out our website, we'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. thanks for watching. Don't forget to savor the flavor. I'm gonna keep drinking some more wine here and I'm digging in the hot water. Genghis Khan used to make these helmets. Can you imagine that?